Hi, my name is Deb Kendrick, and my family loves to travel. I want to tell you about the time I went to Africa. When I was in Africa with my family, I loved seeing all the wildlife. But it was just as amazing to meet the Hutsa Bushmen, who live in the northern part of Tanzania. There are only about 1,500 Hutsa Bushmen left. They are one of the last true hunter-gatherer tribes in the world, roaming from place to place to hunt meat and gather fruit. My parents arranged for us to spend a day with the Hatsa Bushmen. I didn't know what to expect. All I knew is that we had to get up very early because their day starts as soon as the sun rises. When we got there, they had started a fire. Then they were showing us how to make a fire with no matches. You put a stick on the side of a knife and rub the stick between your hands. They put dry grass near the stick it is rubbing and the friction creates a spot that lights the grass. They smoke khaki leaves, supposedly it brings good luck on the hunt. Here they are making arrows for the hunt. They use twigs from sandpaper trees. Here he's whittling a stick down to the size he wants. This boy here whittling is about 14. Behind him you can see their hut, which is made from grass and sticks. I was able to see how they live like our ancestors did thousands of years ago. After they made enough arrows, we ha headed out into the jungle. I was a little nervous. I was afraid a leopard or a lion might jump out and get us. He was still working on his arrows while we walked. Here he is trying some feathers on the end so that they fly straight. Here he's testing his arrows in his bow. All of a sudden they stopped running. I think they heard something. We took off after them, jumping over logs and around bushes. There was a monkey up in a tree that they started shooting at. But the monkey saw them coming, so he dodged them, just like in the Matrix. They kept on shooting and shooting. Part of me wanted the monkey to survive, but I really liked that this is how they get food to feed everybody else. Even when their arrows missed, they were still happy and laughing. They just stayed in a good mood and didn't get frustrated. Here, the kid popping a leaf. He taught us how to make a cool noise with just a leaf in your hand. I think he was getting tired of hunting. On his head, he's wearing the tail of a large spotted Jeanette. They must have killed one and kept the tail for a funny crown. They kept on shooting and eventually lost all their arrows. After a while, they took a smoking break and then they decided to go back to their camp. But on the way, they met a Maasai farmer who had found some of their arrows and gave them back so they could hunt again. This time, they shot a squirrel and skewered it. I felt kind of sick with all the blood and the guts hanging out. They quickly made a small fire and roasted it right there on the spot. They said my dad is the guest of honor, so they gave him what they say is the best part, the brain and the tongue. I tasted the brain, the thigh meat, and the liver. I just thought it's already dead, or I let it go to waste. Plus, this is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Guess what? It tasted just like chicken. The brain was like chicken bubblegum. Yuck. After our little snack, we went back to camp, and they showed us how to shoot. Here you can see the arrow leaving the bow. It hit the ground, but still it was so cool. Later, we went hunting again. This time they had extra ammunition. Black stuff is a poison they make from a plant. If the air hits something, it will help bring down the animal. They were getting serious. They chased after another monkey. This time the air hit the monkey, but it was too fast leaping from tree to tree, and we were too slow to catch it. We were all looking for the monkey, but never found it. But they were good sports about it. On the walk back to camp, the chief taught me some of his language. It composed of some clicking. Here's what the click sounds like. I could do clicks better than my brother. He taught us how to say click or show a guacco. That means say this or show a guacco. Here we are saying goodbye and thank you. New bear. That's thank you in their language. Here's the group shot. You can see that Gus is taller than any of them. I'm almost as tall as the chief. The huts are very joyful and friendly. 
I'd like to go back someday and spend more time with them.